The Electronic System for Travel Authorization ESTA is an automated system that determines the eligibility of visitors to travel to the United States under the Visa Waiver Program VWP. ESTA was mandated by the implementing recommendations of the 9-11 Commission Act of 2007 for travelers from VWP countries arriving in the U.S. by air or sea. Authorization via ESTA does not determine whether a traveler is admissible to the United States. U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP officers determine admissibility upon traveler's arrival. The ESTA application collects biographic information and answers to VWP eligibility questions. As of December 2018, ESTA applications must be submitted at least 72 hours prior to travel, though it is recommended that travelers apply as soon as they begin preparing travel plans or prior to purchasing airline tickets. Passengers including babies, without an ESTA will be denied check-in. In 2010, U.S. Customs and Border Protection began charging a fee of U.S. $14 per ESTA application. ESTA is also needed for visits to territories such as Guam, Puerto Rico and U.S. Virgin Islands. ESTA is not needed when arriving by land from Canada or Mexico because there is no check-in, but a I-94 West paper form must be filled in. Topic. History Passengers were able to sign up in August 2008, and the travel authorization became mandatory from January 12, 2009. Once pre-screened, passengers may reuse the ESTA approval for two years, although they may still need to complete the I-94 West paper form for land entry. ESTA adds a requirement for pre-authorization to the existing visa waiver program. Since January 20, 2010, airlines have been forced through fines to require ESTA at check-in. Before September 8, 2010, ESTA was available for free from the official government websites. Since then, the Travel Promotion Act introduced a charge of $14. This is made up of $10 which goes to the Corporation for Travel Promotion and a $4 fee levied by the CBP for administration costs. The EU ambassador to the United States John Bruton argued that it is illogical to think tourist numbers will go up if they are charged to enter the country. The charge has also been described by critics in the European Parliament as little more than a way to fund advertisements for United States tourism. <laughs> <laughs> Eligible countries As of November 2017, 38 countries participate in the Visa Waiver Program. Visitors may stay for 90 days in the United States which also includes the time spent in Canada, Mexico, Bermuda, or the islands in the Caribbean if the arrival was through the United States. The ESTA is only required if arriving by air or cruise ship. It is not required if arriving over land or on local ferries such as between British Columbia Vancouver and Victoria and Washington State. ESTA holders who are dual citizens of Iran, Iraq, Sudan and Syria had their ASTAS revoked in January 2016, and will be required to apply for a regular tourist visa at a U.S. foreign mission. ESTA holders who have traveled to Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria or Yemen on or after 1 March 2011 will not have their ASTAS revoked, but will be refused entry if their travel is discovered by the CBP on arrival unless they qualify for a waiver. The Secretary of Homeland Security may waive these restrictions if he determines that such a waiver is in the law enforcement or national security interests of the United States. Such waivers will be granted only on a case-by-case -case basis. As a general matter, categories of travelers who may be eligible for a waiver include individuals who traveled to these countries on behalf of international organizations, regional organizations, and sub-national governments on official duty, on behalf of a humanitarian NGO on official duty, or as a journalist for reporting purposes. The leaders of the 27 EU member states agreed in their Bratislava Declaration and Roadmap on September 16, 2016, to 
to set up an analogous EU Travel Information and Authorization System ETIAS. Topic: <laughs> Applying for ESTA. The U.S. government recommends that travelers go online to submit an authorization request at least three days 72 hours before traveling to the United States. This is not a requirement, and about 99% of applications are approved in five seconds. However, if a traveler is not eligible for visa-free travel, he or she will need to apply for a visa at a U.S. embassy or consulate, which is a substantially lengthier process that may require an interview with a U.S. consular officer. As a result, opponents claim the new rules will delay last-minute business travel. Each travel authorization under ESTA can be valid for up to two years. However, a visa waiver program traveler must obtain a new ESTA authorization if he or she is issued a new passport, or changes his or her name, gender or country of citizenship. In addition, a traveler must obtain a new ESTA authorization if any answer to the ESTA application eligibility questions changes. Entry under the visa waiver program is only valid for a combined maximum stay in the USA and its surrounding countries of 90 days. Admission period cannot be extended under the program. If a longer stay is intended, a visa is required. ESTA does not guarantee entry to the United States. U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP officers make final determination of admissibility entry to the United States and may cancel, deny ESTA at any time during travel, for example for suspicions of giving false information in the application. As of December 2018 ESTA is no longer approved in real time to qualifying passengers and passengers are required to apply no later than 72 hours before departure. Third-party websites Some websites offer to complete ESTA applications for a fee, often many times more than the required $14 fee charged by the U.S. government. Access and application through the official U.S. government website are available to any passengers, visitors to the U.S. who qualify under the ESTA program. Prevention of such ESTA fee scams was made more difficult when the mandatory U.S. government fee was imposed, as previous public education efforts focused on getting out the message that ESTA applications were free of charge and anybody requesting payment was an unauthorized third party, even if one of the third party websites is used, passengers themselves still have to complete the same form. Concerns have been raised that third-party sites could be used for identity theft, credit card fraud, or the distribution of malware. Advertisements for paid services appeared at the top of Google searches for many years, until Google took steps to prevent this in most cases in late 2018. Topic. See also. Visa policy of the United States